So uh, here's the deal. I want to thank you all for being here. And I want to preach today real quick, I think, about clean hands, pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. C- clean hands, pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. You are a spirit. First Thessalonians chapter 5. You are a spirit. You have a soul, but you live in a body. You have you have, you are a spirit, amen? So listen to me, a clean hands, pure hearts, and a sanitized spirit. Go ahead and look at your neighbor. I want y'all to help me preach. I want y'all to say clean hands, clean pure hands, hearts, pure and a sanitized spirit. Yeah. So if you have your Bible, Matthew chapter 5 is where I'm going. I'm going to read about two or three different scriptures. I'm going to set a foundation. I'm going to preach the Word of God. Somebody's going to get saved. Somebody's going to get born again. This church is going to turn around. We're going to start going a different direction in Jesus Christ's name. Are y'all alive today? Somebody say amen. Yeah. You say, Brian, how how can you stand up there and be happy? Because my life does not belong to this world. I belong to Jesus. And so here we go. Y'all ready? Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. I have people get mad at me because I'm happy. I have people get mad at me because they say, Brian, it's not like you think. And I'm sitting there going, oh, show me your Bible verse then. Show me your Bible verse then. And so I'm just telling you all, listen to me. This stuff we're doing today is real. It's real. Watch, it's more than words being on a song, up on the board. What we sing about, he's real. He's real. I never thought I would have to tell Christians that God is real. I never thought this. I never, I never thought I'd have to stand in a, in a church and tell people that God is real. We pay more attention to everything else. And I'm telling you, so God is real. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. Here's what the Bible says. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Watch what it says. I don't care what you think. That's what the Bible says. For they shall see God. I'm going to sit there. Y'all get that. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. Let me give you another one in case you don't believe that one. Psalm chapter 24, verse 3 and 4. Psalm 24, verse 3 and 4. The Bible says this. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand, watch, in his holy place? Here's what he says. Who, who in the world can ascend to the hill of the Lord? Who shall be in his holy place? Watch verse 4. It tells you, he who has clean hands and a pure heart, and who does not lift up his spirit, lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. My God, somebody help me preaching here today. 2 Samuel, let me give you another one. Now I'm going to lay it down right here. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 3 through 9. Love this. This right here is the icing on the cake. Clean hands, pure heart, sanitized spirit. 2 Samuel 6, verse 3 through 9. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart. I could stop right there and preach. They tried to put God on something new. I'm not going to preach there, but listen to me. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out to the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill, another hill, everybody say the hill, and Yuzah of Ahio, not Ohio, Ahio, the son of Abinadab, watch, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, the presence of God, and Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines. And you say, Brian, I, I don't believe in musical instruments. You're going to have a hard time in heaven. You're going to have, because there's going to be stringed instruments, drums. It's going to be all kinds of stuff up in heaven. Watch this. And when they came to the threshing floor, transition of Nacon, watch. Yusuf put out his hand to the ark of God, and he took hold of it. Yusuf put out his hand to the ark of God, and he took hold of it. For the oxen stumbled. Watch verse 7. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Yusuf. And God struck him down. God struck him down there because of his error. And he, 
Uzzah, watch, died there beside the ark of God. And David was angry. Watch, David got upset about that. Watch this. Because the Lord had broke, broken out against Uzzah. And that place is called Perez Uzzah this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day. And here it is. You ready? And he said, how can the ark, the presence of the Lord, come to me? How? If, if he can't touch the presence of God, how in the world is he going to come to me? I love this. Let me teach you just for a moment. David asked the question, be honest, I've heard a lot of you ask a hundred times, still asking a hundred times, you've been a Christian a long time, they asked and you asked, how can I get the presence of God to come to me? How can I hold the presence of God? How come you could not touch the presence of God? And listen to me, in other words, what you're saying is these, these words, I, I just don't feel God no more. I hear this all the time. I, I just don't, listen, I'm not as close to God as I once was. How many of y'all be honest with me this morning? You, you're just not on fire like you once was. This old world's put a, a heavy load upon your life. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't quote scripture like you once did. That you don't have that conviction like you once did. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. You don't feel the presence of God no more. And you're just like David. How can I feel the presence of God once again in my life? How many of y'all have asked that before besides this pastor? How in the world can I? I don't feel God like I once did. He don't, I don't feel him breathing down my neck like I once did. Church don't mean much to me like it once did. And I love this. Listen to me. And I want to get this in your spirit before I start really preaching this. David was bringing the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, back to Jerusalem. I'm going to say back to Jerusalem. He was taking the presence of God home. And listen to me very, very, very carefully. They put it on a new cart, a new cart. And as they were traveling, they hit a pothole. How many of y'all know that's just like me and you? As we're traveling along the road, boy, something to just take us by surprise. All of a sudden, uh, you'll land in a pothole. You'll land in a ditch. You don't feel God like you once did. This sermon's for all of us in here today. And all listen to me, they, put, they hit a pothole in the road, and the Ark of the Covenant, I preached this a long time ago. Matter of fact, I think it was in 2010. The Ark of the Covenant shifted. They were on a threshing hold, and I'm telling you what I felt in my spirit. The church is shifting whether you like it or not. We're at a threshing hole. Listen to me. If the church don't stand up now, I'm telling y'all, you know what they want to make the government? They want to make the government God. And if they try, if we come under the government and not under God, you might as well get ready to try to lock these church doors. Because the first thing I'm telling you what the government's going to do they're going to try to make the church become silent. They're going to try to run the, y'all can look at me all you want, I'm telling you the truth today. They're going to try to run the church to the basement. They're going to try to make the church be silent. God designed the church to be the leader. God designed the church to be the spiritual hospital here on earth. That the sick should come to church and they should be healed. I still believe in that. But if the government's in control, they're going to control you. You better learn how to stand up, church. You better learn how to stand up because the new cart means a new thing. They tried to put the presence of God on a new thing. I'm telling you, God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He still heals. He still delivers. He'll still set you free in Jesus Christ's name, and I'm not backing down from it. Telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, hallelujah. Listen to me very carefully. User reached up with his hands. And this looks like something to me. Me and Pastor Drew was talking back in the back. I'm like, just think about this. If the presence of God, you was going down the road, and the presence of God was, was on a new cart, you hit a pothole, all user did was just reach up to not let the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, fall to the ground. 
How many of y'all done that? I'd have done that. It seems so normal. But listen, I got a word for y'all. I got a word for you. User reached up with his hands, he touched the Ark of the Covenant, and he instantly died. Why? Why? Why did a man who was just reaching up and stopping the cart to fall to the ground, he died? And David's like, I don't understand this, God. He was just trying to support the ark. He was just trying to not let your presence fall to the ground. But he died. And so, man, when I study the Bible, I ask questions, hard questions. Why did he die? Here's what God spoke into my spirit. And you can say, Brian, I just think you heard another voice. Think what you want to think. You know, I, watch. I am done trying to be politically correct with the church. I am done trying to be politically correct with the church. I'm telling you, God got a voice. God can still speak. The thing is this, do you have ears to hear what the Lord is saying into your life? Here's what God spoke into me. Because his hands were not prepared to touch the holy. His hands were not prepared to touch the holy things. I'm proud of you. And I really need y'all to lean in and listen this morning because this teaches us. This teaches me. You cannot hold the presence of God with a dirty, with dirty hands, an unpure heart, and an unsanitized spirit. You, you can't do it. It reminds me, and, and listen, it matters to God that you're holy. We don't, we don't, you don't hear about holiness of God no more. Because they relate that to Pentecostal. Watch this. God's not Pentecostal. He's not Episcopalian. He's not Baptist. He's a Jew and the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he, he's still holy. He's still holy. So I'm just telling you, listen to me very carefully. You, you cannot be dirty and clean at the same time. You, you can't. It amazes me in the last eight months, Tommy. I, I've done a research. This is just crazy. In the last eight months in this pandemic, how many times have we been told, Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your I'm going to make a song. Wash your hands. No, I'm not. Man. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And one of the greatest weapons, listen to this. I believe God gave me this word. One of the greatest weapons we have against the pandemic is to wash our hands. To keep our hands clean. And by the way, America has spent $14 million on hand sanitizer. What if, I know, I'm, I'm a catch. What if we, as Christians, Allison, put $14 million back in the kingdom? I'm going to preach a little bit right there. We're trying to keep our hands clean on the outside. But what if you put $14 million on the inside? Come on, somebody. Woo! Preach that, preacher. I think I will. You say, Brian, you done went crazy. No, I'm telling you, I am finally to a point in my life that what we're doing here today is as real, as real, as real, as real. I know up here you think it's real, but I'm telling you to drop it 16 inches. It's real. There's a heaven and there's a hell. And I'm telling y'all today, you're not going to get to heaven and say, well, I was a Southern Baptist, let me in. You can be a Southern Baptist and have dirty hands. Huh. It's okay. $14 million on hand sanitizer. $14 million on hand sanitizer. We had a prayer service here. We invited 131 churches. We had probably 80 people show up. Come on. What, what's wrong? What, what, what's wrong? What's wrong with this world, Anetta? Lord, we need you! 131 churches and 80 people show up? I'm just going to let that sink in. Because I looked out here, this place should have been overflow. We should have been on our knees crying out, God, forgive us! Help us, oh God. Give us clean hands. Give us a pure heart. Sanitize my spirit, oh God. 
Well, I knew it would be a church master today. Listen to me, the only thing, I, I've studied this, the only thing that can heal America is clean hands, a pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Hi, my name's Brian Rafferty, and I approve this message. I'm just telling y'all, how's your hands this morning? Be honest with me. Oh, I got a word. I, I, listen to me. See, America don't have just an outward problem issues. No. Churches and Christians don't have just an outward issues. It also has an inward heart issue. I want y'all to think about this. God gave us to me, and this is so good. Pilate. Pilate looked so good in the Bible, didn't he? He washed his hands. Y'all remember that? Pilate washed his hands. But he still had heart issues. Ah, oh, preach that preacher. He still had heart issues. How many of y'all know that it is possible to wash your hands in public and still have heart issues in private? How many of y'all know you can wash your hands? Lord, you can go to the bathroom now. I went to a church a couple weeks ago, went to the restroom, and I just stuck my hands under there and water come out. I'm like... Oh, that's cool. I'm trying to get it, too. They had, they had hand sanitizer everywhere. $14 million. $14 million. Listen to this. Listen to this. Let me preach Holy Ghost. What you do in private will determine how much glory you can hold in public. What you do in private when nobody's looking will determine how much glory that you can hold in public. I'm telling y'all in Jesus Christ's name, you know what's wrong with America? They, she does not have clean hands. You know why she does not have clean hands? Because 72 million babies have been murdered and the blood is on our hands until we repent. Until we repent. Right now, I don't like sermons like this. We need sermons like this. We need truth back in the church. We need truth back in this house. I'm not mad. Here's what I'm mad about. That Christians are, are, are sitting back and doing nothing. Doing nothing. But I want you glory, God. See, something wasn't right with you, sir. Y'all, Would y'all agree? Something wasn't right. Because he was doing a good deed, Bobby. Lord, he was trying to hold up the presence of God. He wasn't going to let the presence fall. So to us, God, why did you kill him? The real reason something was wrong was because of Jesus' private life. It's so easy to come to church on Sunday morning and hold your hand up. But if your heart's not standing, you see what I'm saying? It's so easy, it's so easy to do a public Act because you get recognized. <laughs> you can tell who needs to be on the greeters team. You can always tell. If the people who are just standing there look like they've been sucking on a lemon, please go sit down. You don't need to be on the greeters team. You need people. Well, y'all got the wrong sheriff up in the saddle today. So true. You can't fight like hell out there. And then come in here and say, well, I washed my hands. How's your heart? How's your heart? How's your heart? How in the world can you fight out in the atrium and then walk into the sanctuary and go, "Woo! praise the Lord. I'm going to go on because it's tough up here today. Woo, it is tough up here today. Something wasn't right with Yusa. Something was wrong in his private life. There was a reason Yusa could not touch the presence of God, and here's the reason. He was dirty. <laughs> he had dirty hands. He had an unclean heart, and he had an unsanitized spirit. He, had, he did. And I'm sorry if y'all come to church today and want a nicey, nicey sermon, and if nothing changed in your life. Th that was last Sunday, and I gave y'all a week to rest. And so today I feel something in my spirit that we need to hear, and I feel like preaching this today. We, we need to hear this today. Church America is hurting. 
People are, we're in trouble. This land, this nation is more than a split race for the president race. Something isn't spiritually right. And y'all may disagree with me, but you can't prove me wrong. You can't prove me wrong. We need to deal with this stuff. We need to talk about it. Because I don't know about you, but we need Jesus. We need his presence. We need God. We need to be able to hold and to touch his presence again. And the only way you're going to do it is with clean hands, a pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. That's the bottom line. You say, well, Brian, I don't have clean hands. What I need to do? Listen to me, Lane. It's pretty simple. Quit complicating the Bible. Repent. Repent. Satan is having a heyday, Perry, with the churches. Satan is having a heyday with some of your minds right now. Satan is messing people up. This nation is divided. It's not one nation under God no more. Y'all know I'm preaching good. We've got to repent, ask for forgiveness, turn from our evil ways, and allow God to touch us, forgive us, cleanse us, and restore us. That's what we need. That's about right. Three people clapping about that. That's about right. It's about right. And so here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I know how to get to that holy place. How many of y'all, you really, really know how to get to that holy place? I know how to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to church. Yeah. I know how to do it. <laughs> I know we can all touch and hold the presence of the Lord. And it's more than just showing up at church. How many of y'all have finally figured it out? Just showing up for church, the devil does that. You got to do more. You got to do more. You got to do more. It's more than just singing a song. It's more. It's more than us just coming together and fellowshipping. We have become the masters, the PhD of fellowship and gatherings and eating. But if you ask the people to come pray, you'll have more for a fellowship than you will prayer meeting. Boy. Where's Travis at? We just need to get real. We just need to have a come to Jesus meeting and say, God, I'm sorry. I don't have clean hands this morning. My heart is a mess. <laughs> My spirit needs sanitized. Lord, I need you to wash me and to clean me and to cleanse me. Lord, I need you to sanitize my mind. God, I need you to sanitize my hands. God, I need you to sanitize my heart. God, I need you to sanitize my body. God, I need a cleansing this morning. You don't hear stuff like this in churches no more. Anymore they call this hate preaching. I'm being honest with y'all. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all, I'm not, listen, the Bible's real. The Bible's real. I'm going to ask y'all this morning as the praise team comes back. Because I, I feel I, I got more, but I, I'm just telling you, man, listen, I'm going to stop right there. Because it's like pushing a chain right now. You say, Brian, you're always, you always about them. Mo I'm telling y'all. I don't know about you, but I want to be a carrier of God's presence. Come on, somebody. I want to be a carrier of God's presence. Hallelujah. And to be a carrier. Isn't that something? Listen to me. The people who were carrying the presence of God, they were good. They were carriers. They were carrying God. And God was carrying them. But a man with unclean hands and an unclean heart and an unclean, unsanitized spirit reached up to touch the presence of God, to hold the presence of God. The Bible says, and he held it. Killed him. I'm just going to ask y'all a crazy question. This is not a 21st century uh, millennial question. 
If you tried to reach up this morning, youth group, with your hands, would you instantly die? See, we read the Bible and say, boy, I'm glad I'm under grace. He's still holy. He's still God. Could it be the reason why the churches are split? It's because of unclean hands, an unpure heart, and an unsanitized spirit. What about over here, man? All y'all in this section. If, could you be, are you a carrier of God's presence? Or if you were to try to reach up right now and, and <laughs> hold the presence of God, will we be calling an ambulance? Or will we be rejoicing and worshiping with you because God is God? What about this side? Can y'all really touch the presence of God? Run! Nobody can touch the presence of God. He touched me this morning. I feel him right now. I don't have to wait to die to experience the goodness of God. I talked with him this morning. I felt him this morning. He's here right now. He's touching me and I'm touching him. We're touching each other. I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm talking to everybody over in this. I'm being real. God's doing something in me. Could y'all reach up this morning? Mariah, could you reach up? As a teenager leading this generation, can you hold the presence of God right now? That's a great question. Listen, that's a great question. I'm going to stop there and I'm going to give an invitation. What about this side? How's your, how's your hands this morning? Are they dirty or are they clean? How's your heart? How are you in private? When nobody else is looking, how are you in private? Because if you can hold him in private, he'll display himself public. What about this side? How's your hands? How's your heart? How's your mind? How many of y'all need to be sanitized this morning? Watch this, you ready? Every one of us do. If you're sitting there going, oh, I'm good, Brian, I'm good, I don't have nothing going on my, you lie. And the Bible says if you're, <laughs> I'm telling you, you lie. Everybody here today needs to be sanitized. Everybody does. I'm the leader. I'm the first one. Y'all can follow me this morning. Clean hands, pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. Clean hands, pure heart, and a sanitized spirit. I want everybody to stand to your feet. Church, Facebook family, friends, and all, every one of you that's watching by website. Here's how I'm going to land the plane. How's your hands this morning? How's your heart this morning? How's your spirit this morning? Be honest. Here you go. Y'all, y'all want to be really honest? Let's have, let's have a good church service. How many of y'all can honest to God leave this morning and say, I touched God. Wow. I've touched God. May God, God's all over me. God, thank you for touching me this morning. How many of you are going to walk out them back doors here in just about five or ten minutes and say, man, today I have been a carrier of the Word of God. Today, today God touched me. Today I touched God. Today my hands are clean. My heart is pure. I've got a sanitized spirit. Is that you here today? Are you pure? Are you holy? Are you clean? You say, Brian, nobody can do it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. We have justified and we have compromised the Word of God. Brian, nobody's perfect. I understand what you're saying. But how do you get perfect? You gotta repent. You gotta repent. You gotta repent. $14 million on hand sanitizer. (laughs) Lord, if you were to ask the local churches to take up a love offering, my God. 
Churches are transitioning. Elkhorn, I wish I could stand up here today and say, you know what, we'll get back to normal. We'll get back to normal. We'll get back to normal. We never, never will. Never will. Never will. So I'm asking y'all today, Jesus Christ, thank y'all with you. Say, I'm with you. Come on, say, I'm with you. Come on, say, I'm with you, Pastor. This has been a tough message. Satan cannot stand me preaching. But I'm going to ask you, are you going to walk out with the same hands or different hands? Are you going to walk out with the same heart or a new heart? I remember my, my stepfather. He was a lost man, but he had a massive heart attack. Massive heart attack. He was in Louisville, Kentucky. He was getting ready to go back for an open heart quadruple bypass surgery. And I'll never forget this. He looked up and he said these words. He was a lost man. He did not know Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And they were getting ready to open his heart up. A major surgery. He said, I guess I need to get some things right before I go back. He said, I need somebody to lead me to Jesus Christ. This is a lost man. Lost man. And Jimmy, when my stepfather got out of surgery, I'm telling y'all he had a new heart. He, he was faithful to God. He was sold out to God. He never wavered. He didn't back down. He said, I know God saved me. Some of y'all need a new heart. Some of you need to say, God sanitize me. I'm unclean this morning. If you want to hold the presence of God, you got to check your hands, your heart, and your spirit. Your hands, your heart, and your spirit. I'm going to say it again as I felt the Holy Ghost. If you want to hold the presence of God, how many of y'all want to be a, a carrier of God's presence? Come on, I want you to raise your hand. If you want to be a carrier of God's presence, there's hands not up. So what that means? You need to be saved. There's three things you got to ask yourself right now. How's your hands? How's your heart? And how's your spirit? If y'all do those three things, you know what's going to happen? God's going to give you a new heart. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I've done what you have called me to do. Lord, it was tough this morning. But I believe I'm at the right house. And God, we, we as Americans, we as the Christians, we need to repent. God, give us clean hands. Give us a pure heart. Sanitize our spirit. I love these precious people. I love this church. I love those who are watching even by Facebook. But God, I pray for a, a true altar call this morning. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer. Believe me that God, the temperature's changing. The atmosphere's changing. And God, people are asking questions. God, How's my hands? How's my heart? And how's my spirit? In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. This altar's open. I'm going to get out of God's way. You let God deal with you this morning. How's your hands? How's your heart? And how's your spirit? Did y'all get the word today? Did y'all get the word today? Somebody give God praise. Amen.